Hi, I'm Kate Simcoe, and I'm recording for Beatport Studio Sessions, a little session for you on how I produced a recent remix for DJ Pierre, and it's of a classic house track of his on Strictly Rhythm. So I'm going to show you how I produced the beats to begin with, and then how I notated the strings, which are really simple, but just how I did that in a different program, um, produce the simple notation then for the string players, recorded it um, into Pro Tools, brought it back into Logic, and made the full track. So here I'm just going to play a little bit of the beginning um, of the original. The way, the way that this came about was Get Physical sent me maybe like 15 options of tracks and I was listening to them and just seeing you know what sort of struck me musically. Um, and definitely wanted to choose a more melodic one and then when I heard the string riff in this track that was what really brought me in as well as the vocals so yeah here's the original What I'll do first then is, you know, zero in on the drums. I had a couple different kick drums here that I layered. Um, usually I try to find, most importantly, um, I think for dance music is to get a kick drum that really cuts through, especially for a track like this, um, that keeps uh, that was like a bit slower BPM than I'm playing personally when I'm DJing right now so you know in order to, to really carry it I wanted it to have a punchy kick so the first kick drum is just a top layer so this is just to hit, like cut through and then below it it's gonna be like the deeper one and then I also have a stuttered 808 kick so this was recorded from like the, me the rolling 808 um, and then I wanted to add in some claps so I recorded the 909 um, I always love the 909 clap so just adding in that again classic because this is such a classic track um, putting that in That's just from Ultra Beat, so that's within Logic. Just a, like a little stuttered clack, clap that's um, to complement the other one that's coming in right now. So then what else do I have here? I've got, this would be from the original. So these are some hi-hats from the original which are nice and shuffly, you know, really cool kind of shuffly feel below.
and also these congas. But these congas have quite a bit of effects on them. So what I'll do is I'll show you what they sounded like before and then this is what they sound like after. So I'm going to go up here and take off the filter and the EQ and the compressor and the delay. Um, this is what the loop sounded like previously. So I'll play that now alongside um, the other drums that I've played just to kind of give like a little context of um, I guess like putting your own production style um, on top of parts that you're already given. So this is how it sounded before. And then this is with the filter on it. So I'll pull up the filter. So you can hear it's cutting off a lot of those um, highest pitched, like polyrhythmic, um, yeah, more tribally sounds. So I cut that off. And then I have this EQ. Let's check, take a look. Not that much happening. Just cut off a little mid range. Um, little Alter Boy, which is one of the sound toys, um, just looks like a little drive on there, and Formant. So this is just like a voice manipulator, which honestly I don't use that often, so I don't remember exactly. Well, let's listen actually. Let's see what what's going on here. So this is if it's muted. Okay, cool. So again, I don't use that sound toys quite as much, but sound toys are great plugins for manipulating and kind of making sounds have different textures. Um, you know, I use their Echo Boy quite a bit, and let's see what other actually sound plays I have here. Audio units. So yeah, Echo Boy, Filter Freak I use quite a bit. Um, Pan Man, the Crystallizer, actually you can completely change a sound. So yeah, I mean this, this changed the texture of the sound, it made it sound a bit warped. So that's, that was a little Alter Boy by Sound Toys on the Congas. Then I added a compressor. This is just Waves compressor. And then a slight delay. So here it is with the compressor, and then I'll show it with the delay. And here it is with the delay. And then lastly, just one more time. So that's, you know, the sort of more, I don't know why the word liquidy came in, um, but you know, kind of free flowing more, um, I don't know, like slinky sort of sound versus the original, which is amazing, just like really classic. So yeah, just got a slightly less tribal feel. Um, so yeah, so then suddenly we're like kind of entering a, a bit of a different sonic world. Um, this was from the original tambourine, I believe. Just not much happening. Not much happening on that besides added some reverb and a compressor and actually EQ'd out quite a bit of the low end on that. So this is, this is how it sounds now. And then this is how it was previously. I can I can see the EQ here. Just I was just looking here on the left side of the screen. I can see how it's like a big low cut there. So this is what it sounds like um, with that deactivated. It's not really that different actually. Here it is again with it on. Hmm. Well, anyway. So that's it. That's just a tambourine. It doesn't look like that much was changed on it. Cowbell. 
So this is, I can see, I think that's like the fab filter timeless, if I'm correct. So yeah, basically here, the cowbell, I've chopped it up. Um, so yeah, usually in Logic, what I'll do is I, I make everything when possible into boxes. That's like some good advice I had in the past. So if you can see like, you know, bar 17, it's one box, bar 18, um, even if they're not full, I sort of do that. So let's see a good example. If I have one in this track, maybe because it's a remix, I don't have quite as much, but like, for example, in the vocals here, this is probably a new vocal cut that I made. And you, know, you can see it's eight bars from 33 to the end of bar 40. And what I would have done is created a new um, audio file. And then it's just easier, I find, to, to keep track of what's going on. If, if you know that you want things to happen every so often, rather than cutting and pasting like little slivers and then sometimes you, they can shift one way or another and it can just get a bit messy for editing. Um, anyhow, after that advice, that's what I did up here, <laughs> the little slivers. Um, and, but you know what I can see by doing that as I cut up the cowbell. So basically like if I just duplicate this track and I'm just curious to see if I took something like this and I put it below Oops, I want to copy it below um, and just pulled it out. Yeah, so as you can see, it was constant. So if I wanted to um, solo that, this is what it sounded like. And that's with actually, that's with the effect. So, so this is what it sounded like before the cowbell. Um, so I'll put that with like, I don't know, this together. So yeah, that was the cowbell previously, and then this is how I've chopped it up and I put a delay on it. So this is without the delay, and then I'll have a pause, and then with the delay on there, which is the Filter Freak Timeless, so you can hear it sort of ping pong or, you know, panning from left to right, just, just again, messing with space a bit and just trying to put sort of a little bit of production style that I'd be into, um, into the, into the remix. So I'll play everything up to this point now with the drums. Oh goodness. That's the original too. So yeah, you can hear the cowbell kind of coming in and out. And then lastly, just like wrapping up the non-melodic parts in the track, there are some effects that I really, really liked from the original. And then I added in a couple symbol, crash symbols to just be transition moments or sort of like underscore um, a couple moments in the track. So this just, you know, basic, you know, just putting um, just like a filter on it. And then I put the filter freak that I mentioned earlier. So this is without the filter freak, just, just the idea of like, you know, something really simple, but then the, the filter freak on it. So just a rhythm on it. Um, and you know, you can see here it's 16th. Um, that's it really. It's just a 16th bar, uh, 16th note pattern. So we'll see what was going on in that part of the track. But let me just solo. So it's just the drums up to that point. Yeah, that's the aesthetic basically of the drums. So I went with a deeper sound, tried to add in classic elements as well, even though they were new for me. So the 808, the 909, and retained some things in the original, pretty much how they were, but then also added just a bit more delay and production on 
a couple of the things, but wanted to keep it simple again because the melodic parts, to me, are the highlight of this track. So here's the organ from the original, which is like the main hook. Um, this is with no effects first. This is with all the effects. There's a compressor, um, Echo Boy, which again is one of the sound toys up here. Just an eighth note sort of echo. Another sound, uh, another sound toy is just micro shift. Um, just because with the strings at the end, I was just trying to pitch the organ against the live strings and just a little EQ that probably again had something to do with cutting out against the live strings. So that's the organ rip. Um, and then let's see what's going on here. There's more organ stuff. So I put some effects on the organ as well. Just to kind of again bring in that like more W vibe. Um, bass over here. Here's the bass. Hmm. So I replayed that. I think it sounds like, yeah, okay, what happened? I was gonna say it sounds like um, some of the notes are muted and they are. So the original would have been, let me solo that. What I did is I just add, just made a little bit more strip back there. And then, and the bass here was just using the FM8. So the FM8 is Native Instruments. Compressor, a little delay, um, waves limiter, that's it really. And then over here, there's another melody from the original. So what I did there was I layered I layered the XS24 sampling um, with just a synth here in Logic, the e EFM1. So here's that against the bass. And that does not work against the organ, by the way. I can tell because every time it appears, it's not appearing with the organ. Um, so that's a separate kind of vibe. Um, I think I added that, to be honest, that little thing. I'd have to listen to the original one more time. And then sub bass. So that was something that again, I wanted to just kind of add in a bit, you know, a bit of flavor to make it sound different than the original. And um, so here's the melody at the beginning thing. Oops. Oops. Sorry, I just, um, that should be right, okay. Just have to mute the original. Sorry. And then I'm going to kind of skip ahead to where the lower sub bass comes in against the bass. <laughs> section and the strings again were what drew me to the track the most 
and they were actually a lot more difficult to edit and give that natural loose feeling of the original um, than I expected. It was sort of at a recording session where I just added this you know little sheet music and was like okay let's just record this quickly and we didn't have many takes and you know I notated it. What I had here this was just really basic in Sibelius that I made. So yeah, there's just, you know, program Sibelius and for sake of time, I'm not going to open it right now, but that's a notation software where you can take in MIDI. So for this remix, um, it was missing the string parts actually. So I was so excited to remix it um, because of the strings. And then when I got the parts, there was just one um, one synth that wasn't the actual strings and it, it for some reason was like in a different key for part of it than the vocals and the um, chords so I couldn't use it with it so that's why I recorded live strings which was fun anyway so all good so this is in Sibelius just really simple um, violin in one line cello an octave below easy 16 bars and yeah, I mean, like I said, like notating here so that this came at like on the and, not like hitting just on the downbeat and, you know, try to notate it as close as I could. And I'll play in Logic now. You know, what I did is I introduced the strings so that it didn't have the full hook at the beginning. Um, and then I'll show you in Pro Tools like the back end of that really quickly too. <laughs> basically the idea there um, and I'll quickly pull up Pro Tools all there is to say is I recorded it in Pro Tools um, because mainly when I record live instruments I use Pro Tools I think it's better for audio and most of the recording studios at least in London um, prefer to use Pro Tools and that's how they're set up so yeah I just had the backing track which I bounced from Logic which pretty much was at the state that you heard it now just you know the, the basic beats and everything and then put that into Pro Tools and yeah have the different playlists of probably just like three or four takes and um, so like for example here would be one of the violins okay let me turn that down a little bit so yeah, like here would be, so you can hear quite a bit, you know, raw sound of the violin. And then I had the cello beneath it. And then yeah, what next step was just, you know, choosing the best takes and then like I was saying, in Pro Tools, when you have the audio, just trying to mess with it a bit, you know, just trying to make it have that sort of lilting feeling of the original. And then bringing it into Logic here, the last thing here was just adding in the vocals. So at the beginning, I'll just show you quickly what I, what I did, what I chose with that vocal that I had looped. <laughs> I did there is I just took love and then I put H delay which you know just is in a delay um, from waves pretty simple um, but I liked how it made it sound like 
loving. It's, it's like taking love and happiness, but you know, just made it made it sound like maybe it sounds more like loving. Um, put that there, and then I chopped up some of the vocals here a little bit later. On. <laughs> subtle things but you know cutting up the vocals the part that I really like that said you know make you want to make you want to do right and putting that next to the cello beneath it you know so they're kind of both talking to each other but again just trying to keep it stripped back and not too busy in this remix and to be honest that's pretty much it I had just these organ riffs on the bottom <laughs> Which again were amazing, but I wanted to kind of keep with the ethos that I keep mentioning, you know, just keeping it streamlined. And so just, you know, took little bits and pieces of those as well and use them in a somewhat rhythmic way and just insert or like an effect almost rather than continuous. And that's it. That's that's my remix of DJ Pierre Love Tracks. And what I'm gonna do now actually is call DJ Pierre on Skype. We're gonna hear from him like a little backstory on the original because I thought that'd be cool and um, you know he's such a great legendary producer and coming from Chicago he was one of you know my favorites and I love DJing Future like if you guys you know want to hear some proper Chicago acid you know it's Future P-H-U-T-U-R-E <laughs> Future with the P-H um, so yeah I'm gonna dial him up right now and see what he has to say so here's DJ Pierre, who wrote the original track, and just dialing him in to see the story behind the original love tracks. Hey guys, what's up? DJ Pierre. And um, I just want to give a little bit of an explanation of where love tracks came from. Um, the idea originated in the music box because Ron Hardy used to play this track that had a, a similar string arrangement and and we loved it so much and around 95 around the time Ron Hardy probably passed away I just really was heavily thinking about Ron Hardy the music box was on my mind and I just really wanted to create that track because that symbolized the emotional love that we had for the music box and Ron Hardy it was just it was so much passion and so much love for the music in the scene and that song kind of embodies that it kind of represents just the, the more of a passionate vibe of the music box besides the banging side and the crazy side and he plays things faster than normal speed but that was lets you know how far he can go how far left and how far right so that song was kind of like a tribute to him and the music box that's awesome that's so amazing it was on strictly rhythm right Yes. Original. Absolutely. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. That's the background on the original. And thank you guys for checking out the behind the scenes on the new remix as well. All right. Bye, Pierre. Great to chat with you.